is it, uh, is it over over nine hundred? <laughs> Everybody wants that, and now most of the majority are for you actually. Yeah. <laughs> you already answered one. You already answered the wrong question, eh? Oh yeah. We we'll just chuck that in here again. Yeah. About being thirty. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not really come. Makes sense coming from me. <laughs> We really should have like ear pieces and everything, eh? You know, just fake ones, so we look like we're actually being gold. Yeah. Just jeans, yeah. Good. Good morning, good evening, everybody from around the world. Um, welcome to our first uh, live athlete hangout. Um, you know, just here, obviously, uh, we've got the uh, first round of the WTS uh, season uh, opening in Auckland tomorrow. Um, we're uh, lucky enough to get our our first guest on the show um, is an uh, Olympic silver medalist and uh, former world champion uh, Javier Gomez. Um, thanks a lot, mate, for making time and coming in to, to talk to me. I mean, you're probably the second time of talking to me in the last <laughs> years, but um, yeah. it's uh, it's good to have you here, mate. So uh, we've got a uh, obviously we're at, we're, we're um, streaming live here, and uh, we've got a, a lot of questions that uh, people have been tweeting in and, and Facebooking in um, on the account and. Uh, yeah, so we've got a bit of questions, but we're gonna we we'll have a chat to you uh, sure. for the first twenty minutes, and after that we're gonna swap you over. Swap over, and Barb's gonna come in, and then uh, uh, Jan Fredino is gonna come in for the last twenty minutes. So uh, first of all, uh, you know, how's the season? Uh, it's about to start. How do you feel? And uh, you're looking forward to racing uh, after winning this race last year? Yeah, of course. Um, training has been going great. Uh, the last month it was in Sanchin, I was in Australia, um, with good friends, and um, really focused at this beginning of the year. And uh, yeah, even though I had a couple of races, this is actually the first big one. And a race that, that I really like, it had great memories from last year. It went perfect, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, the weather was uh, was fantastic here last year, as you can remember. I mean, no, we, uh, fantastic for me. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, we really do love the field weather sport that we are a triathlon. Uh, you know, the, we really turned the weather on here last year, but it looks like it's going to be better conditions uh, this weekend. Um, the water temperature seems to be quite um, yeah. nice and toasty, so yeah, um, yeah it's going to be an exciting race. Yeah, it's true that I like these, you know, tough conditions and rain and these kind of, uh, of things, but um, actually it's better for everyone. It's a dry race, you know, for spectators, for the athletes as well, and to avoid crashes and problems. And yeah, hopefully it's going to stay dry and it's going to be sunny so everyone can enjoy the show. Oh, all right. Well, well, we might as well get straight straight into it and uh, and start asking a few questions uh, about how they for the for the users. So. Uh, Hey, okay. So first question here, mate, is uh, from from John Lynch. Um, I'd like to hear what was going through your mind out of T two in London last August. You've got two Brownleys on your shoulder, and one with a penalty yet to be served. Was the game plan being executed, or was it hold on for dear life? In my opinion. One second. Just have a look at right here. So what? You know what, what? What? What was going through your head as you? As, you know, as you were as you were coming out of the well, and you saw that. It was not a big surprise. That my previous plan before the race, if everything Everything went well. I knew I would be running shoulder by shoulder with the Browns, sure. so that was a good thing. And um, yeah, they are very tough to beat. Very, I, I knew they would start really, really fast the first K, maybe around 240, 245, yeah. something like that. So I just tried to to hang on there. And um, yeah, I knew uh, Jonathan had stopped for a penalty, so that was a good thing for me. But um, yeah, Alistair set the pace really high from the beginning, and just <laughs> was nice to try to keep up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just sort of waved from from the, from the background as you guys ran away. It, was, it looked pretty intense. And, yeah, it was pretty yeah. intense. Yeah. Yeah, did, did, and were you, were you aware of, um, you know, the, well aware that John had that penalty? I mean, were you getting information from, from your coaches? Um, or I saw the got board? information actually on the bike with Alex Holmey yeah. in the last lap. And um, as soon as he started to run, yeah. Omar was there and he just told me that. So confirmed that he had actually uh, a penalty. So I knew, well, if he has something left, he has yeah. to push half from the beginning because yeah. you know, he has to stop 15 seconds. And he didn't do that because I think Alistair yeah. was just running too fast yeah. for, for everyone else. And, um, and that you know, was a bit um, good for me. I see I knew almost the silver medal was secured, but um, I was racing for the goal and I tried it. But 
was not possible for sure. So now the next question comes from um, Alberto Sanchez. What do you feel when you win? Like, what does it? What did, did, is there a different feeling for you when you win different races, or is it just the same feeling? Or well, to be honest, it's a different feeling depending on the race. It's not the same winning a whatever local race or a training race, what you, you would call, or win a big race like like this one last yeah. year, for example, after a thrilling sprint finish or something like that. Yeah, it's really pretty emotional, and you never get tired of winning uh, big races. It's, it's just you have to leave that thing. It's hard to explain, but um, yeah, you, you know, um, you're working so hard for for months, for years, and when yeah, when it pays off in the race, it's pretty good. And and and, and, and winning like in a sprint finish, like you did here last year, I mean, obviously that was a fantastic race. Um, yeah, I can't remember. There was some guy who was out front who was doing something different, and you guys passed him really quickly, but. Um, <laughs> But you know, like, is is there something that different about like you know potentially like leading from start to finish and, and being and doing a race and winning a race like that? I mean, it's, it's obviously pretty unheard of within the WTS or knowing that races come down to a tactical um, point in the race where it comes down to a sprint. You know, you think that'll make a difference? You know, how you feel when you win? You know, that you just dominated fully, or at the end of the day, if you win, it's a win. Well, if you win, it's a win, but it feels different. When you're winning yeah. a sprint finish. It was actually the first time I went to sprint finish. You, you with me a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think Johnny was too happy, actually. <laughs> no, uh, Johnny won enough races. Yeah. Really easy, so it's yeah. all right. Nice to share it around. Yeah. But, the three um, of you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's really it's running your way into the last 200 meters, and then it's suddenly, it's like a new race. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've been racing for two hours, and all goes for the last 200 meters. And, yeah, all the adrenaline, you know, if you cross the finish versus Really amazing. They said I, I lost so many, so it was good to win at this one. <laughs> cool, mate. Uh, okay, so next one we've got from here from Josie Summer Aiken. Have Have you ever had self doubt about your career? And if so, how did you overcome that? Um, yeah, you always have doubts. You know, sometimes um, you have tough moments on your career, whether whatever injury is or you're ill, or you don't feel good on training, or or as good as you should feel, or get beaten by others. Um, I feel pretty lucky that I've been always um, kind of on the top for the last few years, never have really downs. But um, I work work really hard for that. But um, you need to be strong mentally yeah. uh, to overcome all this um, difficulties. The same that you need to be calm when you win races, and it's not like wow, I'm the best in the world and, and everything's done. You need to keep on working, try to do get the best out of you, and the results will come by itself. Yeah, for sure. Um, Tom Morwood here has, what, what's your favorite pre- and post-race meals? Hmm. Um, Pre-race meals uh, is not as my favorite as what I should eat. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I was it's a nice paella. paella. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like rice, yeah, yeah. I, I think some rice, and I try to avoid sauces and these kind of heavy meals, just some rice, or maybe with some roast chicken and stuff like that. It's good before a race. And after a race, um, yeah. You know, and I always feel like sweet before races. Yeah, yeah. I try to not have it much. But after races, I never feel like sweet. I feel like salty. I want to have a pizza or a burger or stuff like that. So um, if everything went well, I just get a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and a nice bit of chocolate at the same. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, Sam, I'll stop here. So if you were a triathlete, what sport would you do? Uh, you better answer this question right, mate. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I was a swimmer. I started as a swimmer, you know. Um, so that's my background, I guess. But I think I'm not a very talented swimmer. Um, I worked really hard when I was a kid. He's not a very talented swimmer. No, I, I would never. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling something on this. <laughs> no, I, I would never be a world class swimmer, I think. Um, but probably I would be a better runner. Oh, you, you, sure. you, you used to tweet about doing 1535, 1500 meters in South Africa. 1542. Oh, 15, sorry, 1542. Yeah, I was even being nice to you. I would never swim 1445. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I uh, did, did send some chills down here in the Southern Hemisphere when we started seeing those kind of tweets, so I must admit. <laughs> There's a few program changes, hasty program changes. Yeah. Um, what are you? Mikey Car Carrasco. Oh, this is a Spanish one. I better not uh, try and read this. I wouldn't want to butcher the, your, your beautiful language. So what have we got here, Ali? This one here. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's, a, that's a fail. It's how you... Um, how you same, yeah, same in Spanish, man. Same in Spanish. How do you break your mental barriers? Um, so why don't, you, why don't you answer that in Spanish, mate? You answer that in Spanish, and I'll, I'll sit here and I'll pretend that I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to say yes. yes. Um, 
¿Cómo rompo las barreras mentales antes de competir? Eh, simplemente intento hacer el trabajo lo mejor posible. Intento eh, pensar que todo va a ir bien, que he entrenado muy duro. Sobre todo me refuerzo en el hecho de, de saber que he entrenado muchísimo y que estoy preparado para hacer lo mejor posible. Yeah, that is a, the best answer I ever heard. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. And I really have to brush up on my Spanish skills, and this is going to keep working because you'll probably keep winning. So I'm going to have to learn how to speak Spanish pretty quickly. Um, the next one is uh, from Almeida Triathlon Training. Well, it just looks a bit serious, a bit of a tweet, serious tweet. Uh, Hi, Harvey. How have you ever been? Have you ever been overtrained? And are you strictly following your coach's instructions, or does he leave you some margin to adjust training sessions depending on how you feel? Yeah. Um, well, I think I've been. Overtrain sometimes, but not too bad. Like other athletes, you have some friends, and, and, and you know how is that? You know that you're a smash for, and you really need to stop and, and take a break. I was never that bad. I think I, I know myself pretty well. But uh, yeah, all my my former coaches and my coach would say that I, I just sometimes do my own thing. I never. Um, if I think that I need to rest, I would rest. If I if I really think that I need to go harder, I would go harder. Than what they say, which is maybe not good, but that's the way I am. And I've been racing for a long time. I think I know my body pretty well. And sometimes it's good to uh, obviously listen to the coaches. They they have all the knowledge, but also listen to yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a big thing that people people don't understand as a professional athlete. You really yeah. need to know your own body. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's different. You know, when you are whatever 16, 17, yeah. 18 years old. Yeah, it takes some very you, you need yeah. to be more directed by by coaches and stuff. But yeah, after racing for 10 years, high level, you, you know a little bit of yourself. A little bit, actually. Yeah. You've got to have, you know, you gotta let go a little bit, but yeah. most of the but, time... But it's it's also important to have a view from the outside, because sometimes, you know, how we are, we are from some training, and we train, train, it's... It's, it's yeah, athlete. Yeah, I will tell you, hey, man, stop. <laughs> athlete, athlete, lead coach, driven. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here, Francis Bur Burgos, what motivates you to train? The one thing, thought, that helps you push yourself over the line? Um, I guess... Yes, yeah, it's, for, it's very simple. I enjoy training. Yeah. You know? There are days which are tough that you don't want to wake up early or you don't want to, um, you, you feel tired, you don't want to go to the drive and do a hard session. But most of the times, I kind of feel like just training. I, I enjoy it. And of course, when you think about whatever Olympic gold or big races that pumps you up and you really want to go out and, and hit the road and, and do your best. You, you, you see a lot. You see a lot of the athletes. Um, you know, obviously the triathlon within the Olympics has been. It's still we're still relatively young. You know, we've only had, only had four Olympic games, and 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 you see a lot of athletes after they, you know, they win the Olympic gold. It's like you know, it's they've reached the epitome of what they're doing. They they almost look for for other things. It's, you know, being close, being you know, really good friends with Bevan, and that was something that continued to drive drive him on um, the last four years. The fact that he, you know, he won silver and then he won bronze and. You know, we're searching for that goal. Is that something yeah. that it's keeping you, you know, just focus completely on Rio? You know, you just like you want to have yeah. that magical day where you can, yeah, you can win that you know, goal. Yeah, after, after London, I just sat down and I thought about what I wanted. Had a lot of plans in my mind as well, yeah. or tried to do something different. Because it's important to find all those motivations yeah. to keep going. But um, for me, the challenge is uh, right now is racing these guys around you. Yeah. You know, racing the ground is for other really talented athletes uh, out there. It's it's very complicated. So yeah, that's that fires me a little bit, yeah. and um, I think I'm able to get that goal by having gone to the Olympic Games or in Beijing. I know it's going to be very difficult, and you know, one day race everything can happen. But um, I'm going to go for that and try it. You think in, in, in some in some ways, you know, we, we talk about um, in sport like conferences where you have you have people that you measure yourself against, and I guess in, in your early years, you know, you you might have Ivan Ivan Rana yeah. for, for for a long period of time where you looked up and then. The, Point where you started racing him, yeah. and then, then you started getting on top of him, and, and you used him as a, a conquerence, and now to walk away from that and go to something else, and now you obviously have Alistair and Johnny and, and the rest of the guys that are trying to get, you know come come at you. I mean, that did that keep you motivated to like you know as long as you've got that that conquerence of somebody trying to beat you, you know that yeah. somebody's got it over you. You just keep trying to. Yeah, yeah, you know, that happens the whole time. Yeah. it happened with me uh, with Ivan, which was yeah. a good teacher, yeah. you know, and yeah. was he was world champion, and yeah. learned a lot. Of um, yeah, so you can fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, but now with with rounds or other athletes when they when they beat you when they are they just you know get a level even higher. You, you try to to get better. Yeah. Um, 
I've been improving the last four years, even though I haven't won yeah, yeah. as many races as I did back in 2007, but I think I'm able to run faster than, than then. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I need. I know I probably need to improve a little bit for Rio if I want to be in Mexico on a fight for the medals. And but I also think I can do it. So that's why. I, yeah, that's why I'm here and why that's, I'm so right. That's dangerous. <laughs> so we've got another. We've got another Spanish question here, mate. So right. you just uh, go and read that out. Yes. Javi, dejando el triatlón a un lado, ¿qué es lo que te gusta hacer en tu tiempo libre eh, y qué haces para pasártelo bien? Yeah. It's, um, what do I do in my free time to do that fun and enjoy it? Lo que hago en mi tiempo libre, no tengo mucho tiempo libre, pero me gusta, toco un poco la guitarra, me gusta tocar la guitarra, me gusta estar con mis amigos, estar con la familia. Ahora, por ejemplo, he estado desde lo que llevamos de años solamente cuatro días en casa, entonces cuando vuelvo a casa me gusta. I knew it. I got, I got it again. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, and so, and we've got another one from um, from live on Twitter uh, from Lee Woodruff. Uh, you know, what's your nicest course? Well, you know, what's your favourite course, or uh, something you look forward to, or that you just want to like, you know, just can't wait to race? Well, uh, oh, we haven't been there yet, have we? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, this course is very special. Yeah. It's really challenging, and, and you know, you like it too. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, Probably you sign it. <laughs> potentially, so, potentially, I might have a little bit of influence in this yeah. course, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's a very challenging course. Three hills per lap, it's eight laps, so 24 hills. It's pretty demanding. There are other good ones. Uh, Madrid is a good course too, it's also hilly. And there are other flat courses, but interesting, like Hamburg, very technical, very tricky. Um, yeah, I think um, you'll like this kind of courses. We are a bit poor about going from runabout to runabout, you know, that's not very. Interesting for us and athletes, but um, I'm really looking forward to Kisville this year. It's going to be pretty epic. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's some some good. You know, it's, it's hard to choose only one, but uh, yeah, sometimes it depends how we feel. Kisville is going to be quite an interesting course. Yeah. It's going to create a different dynamic. Yeah, I, I went up that hill with Greg Bennett. Remember a couple of years ago after the race, and we just wanted to okay, let's do it easy. But there's no way to do it easy. It's yeah, yeah. really steep, and we had a 39.25, and it was. I like how it's, it's going to be yeah, yeah. It's a very tough race. You have to choose gears and, and yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to be like, so it's going to be interesting, really interesting. Uh, all right, Re Rebecca Whittle, here's a, here's a bit of a different question, mate, from Rebecca Whittle. Uh, if, you, if you could have superpowers, what superpower would you want and what would your name be? I mean, clearly, <laughs> clearly he's, already, he's already decided that he's the white wolf. Yeah, that would be a, <laughs> sounds like a superhero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I mean, you've already super wide wall. I don't know. Maybe, maybe she already knew what you were going to wear. Too. I'm here to ask that kind of question. Yeah, that would be a, a good name for superhero. What kind of powers? Um, maybe just be able to run faster than everyone else is asking. That would be enough. I don't need to fly or. I don't, or no, no, like no offense, then you're already a superhero. I think you've already got the power. <laughs> no, no, really. Come up with something special, more special than that, mate. Just, just press a button and the last, do the last K in 225 or something. Like that. Well, 225, <laughs> yeah, that, that would be nice. <laughs> All right. And, um, from Aaron McDougall, at, at what point in your triathlon career did you realize that you had potential or wanted to take the sport further? Well, it came slowly, you know. I've always been, I never improved really fast, but it was, I never stopped, you know, step by step since I was a junior. But I guess a, a good Changing point in my career was uh, back in 2003 in Princeton. You know, when, uh, I was it was my first year of 23, and I won, won that championship, which I never expect to win. And then I realized, you know, I can do it well here, and yeah, the Olympic Games next year in Athens, so why not try it? Even though I was only yeah, 20 years old, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw that I had some potential. Yeah, I remember seeing you there um, that race. I was just actually talking to your to your coach Alice about that actually. Uh, I remember seeing you there running around and thinking, "What's that? This guy? I haven't, I haven't seen him before." And I think I oh, might have seen him on the French Grand Prix circuit, but I'm not sure. But then, uh, yeah, and I thought to myself, "Right there, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was a great race. I have great memories of the place. Princeton is yeah. awesome, and and then we enjoy watching you guys. Yeah. And, and Ivan had a great race. Yeah, yeah, of course. It was a good day for Spain. Yeah, yeah it was a great day. Yeah. And very beautiful course. And it was probably the moment that changed my career. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got another another Spanish question here. From Javi. Hola Javi, metes gimnasio o pesas en las piernas? Si es así, ¿en qué fechas y en qué intensidad? I do, do weights, you know, in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Brilliant. 
course I do. I mean, look at this guy. Hey, look at that T-shirt. That's not a muscle T-shirt right there. Yeah, that's, 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 he's just filling that out. Um, right, so it's funny. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, sí, sí, que hago gimnasio. Eh, sobre todo a principio de temporada. Una buena base general. Con algo de pesas. Mucha autocarga también. Más que para hacer fuerza, por supuesto, y para evitar lesiones también. Yeah. And then we're going to real simple one here, mate, from Thomas Harford. You might, you might even not want to give this away, but what is your 10K PB? Have you ever done a 10K on a okay. track or on a road race? I was just asked that a few moments ago for a brand new interview, and I never raced on track 10K. Like, you know, when you're really fit, yeah, yeah. you're racing triathlon almost every weekend, so you didn't have, um, you don't spend much energy in that. But um, I think for the, the training I was doing before London and the times of training was, it would run maybe 28, 30, 28, 35, something like that, just on the 10K. Yeah, because you know, we run in London 29, 15 off a pretty fast bike, so I guess it's something I could do. It's, I, mean, I mean, like, it, 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 like, it just blows my mind sometimes, you know, like to see where the sports, where the sports come from you know, yeah. and how far we've progressed. And of course, it takes individuals um, to move it like that. And I, I know, but to be perfectly honest, I think you're, you're, you're a huge part of that, mate. Uh, you now the, the pace that, that everyone's running these days, is, uh, you know, it makes for an easy exit for us old people to get out of the sport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty insane. And I've been already for a long time there, and it changed a lot. And yeah, um, I remember some some really tough races. I remember Carnival when you won the yeah, 2006 yeah. with the tough course. And, and yeah, but I needed I needed a, yeah, a two-minute head start, mate. I mean, yeah, and you, you nearly still caught me. Yeah, you <laughs> were going to buy like, yeah. oh, about two minutes, and uh, yeah, I didn't catch you. But nowadays it's very difficult to do that. Yeah, for and sure, for sure. You guys are running very fast, it's true. Yeah. All right, so we got last little the little question here. It comes from um, Laron Vidal. Don't, don't think we've known this guy, but he says, he says, hey, Harvey, how does it feel to be 30? I can still make that joke not for long, though. Yeah, not for long. He's going to be 30 next year. He, even when he writes it on Twitter, he's not funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's not a very funny guy, is he? He's just a screech guy. Oh. <laughs> but you, 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 are, you are 30 now. Um, yeah, I'm 30, yeah. I'm and uh, you've gone over the hill, so, you know, it's but, but pretty, still getting better. It's, well, I hope so, but it's pretty amazing that only a few years ago, I got a feeling that I was a young kid racing the, the old ones and yeah. tried to make my my place there. And now I watch the solids and races, and I'm probably one of the oldest, you know. That's what happens. Racing mate. kids that have been just <laughs> coming out and never heard before, and they are really good, really talented. And, and it's it seems like it changed. There was no middle point. It was went from being a kid to be the one of the oldest. Oh. One. But you know, as soon as I feel good on training and and keep on improving year by year, that's that's all right. I think 30 is a good age, and even a bit older is, is good on this sport, it's an endurance sport, uh, so uh, if you take care of yourself and, and you have, um, if you avoid injuries and, and all the illness and stuff like that, you can perform well. Yeah. Cool. Alright, Harvey, well mate, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, pleasure. It's a pleasure thanks to always talk with you. Um, uh, wish you good luck tomorrow. Thank you very um, much. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure this course is going to suit you well and uh, we wish you the best and no doubt we'll probably be uh, talking again during the year. So yeah. uh, good luck with the mate, good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Cheers. Now, uh, now we're going to swap Harvey out. This yeah. is how we do things here. It's a transition. So T1 yeah. is now going through. <laughs> Harvey comes out, and we bring in the beautiful Barbie Riveros. So, uh, oh, you good mate. morning. How are you going? Oh, look, she's, she's even talking. You know, she's got some lingo going on here. Yeah, bro. So, uh, so well, we just got we've just uh, been chatting to Harvey for the last twenty minutes about um about uh, his triathlon, as uh, everything he's done in triathlon, and. Uh, you know, and now it's time to bring some uh, some beauty into the show because clearly I'm the I'm far from that and you know as we can see over there he's wearing a wild wolf t-shirt so uh, <laughs> so it's good to see we've got someone good looking on set um, we've got a ton of questions here for you Bob so we we a few of them are in uh, in Spanish so as I did with Harvey I'll, I'll hand that over to you and then you can uh, you can answer the people in Spanish and then uh, give your answer in Spanish and I'll sit here and pretend that I know what you're saying okay. and then uh, and then we'll uh, we'll get through some others in English as well okay. Right. So you're looking forward to, to racing in, in, in Auckland, obviously, tomorrow. You were here for the, the grand final last year and uh, on the same course. So it must be exciting to almost come back here and, and get the job done. Uh, you know, you had a good race last year, but I'm sure you're yeah, looking for more this year. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's always really nice to come here to Auckland. Um, to Australia. I like to race in, in the summer here. I mean, in Australia. And uh, it's still really fun. 
I mean, we got a kid with Sarah who's you know, very uh, worried and always made it big and really good event. So I always enjoy to come to New Zealand, Auckland, and yeah, the venue is really, really charming and I, I enjoy it a lot. You know, you've always performed well. You seem to um, think about over your, over your career since the WTS started. You've always performed well in the, the first events and obviously basing yourself in Australia. Uh, it's, a, it's given you an advantage in that getting into the first rounds in Sydney and, uh, of course, now um, Auckland being the first round. So you must be looking for a good performance. And, uh, of course, you know, kind of suits uh, a little whip snap like you. Um, not really. I guess in uh, last year uh, I've been trying a little bit of my training uh, to Software in the start of the year. Yeah. Uh, I think probably before we, uh, with, with our squad, uh, we start to yeah. yes, yeah. and then we were part to build for the year. So this time, <coughs> pretty much, you know, uh, training with Omar, you know, um, Spanish coach, and I like to, to start a little bit with them. So, so I don't expect nothing. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, it will be my first race in November, so I actually am. Out of our racing shape or racing, you know what I mean? So I don't know, I will see what I can do oh, on Saturday. She sounds like she's playing a good game for me. No, 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 not really. <laughs> so we'll start, off with Bar we'll start here with some questions, Barbara, from Sarah Thornton. Barb, do you ever roll into a flat spot where training is really, really hard? How do you motivate your yourself out of it, or is it just an amateur affliction that doesn't happen to pros? BS Chica, you're the best. <laughs> Uh, I just go to a bar and have some beer. <laughs> no, not really. Like you know, you always go to that pub that uh, you feel like you're terrible. You know, um, I, I remember last year in Yokohama, my teacher was I guess you know pretty hard. I was quite disappointed after my performance in the game. So I was like, oh, you know, um, yeah, I have a terrible race. I mean, I still did top ten, but yeah, I feel terrible now for that. Was running back. You know, how you get motivated to, you know, especially to the grand final and, and the last bit of the season. And um, yeah, I guess you just come back to the basics and say, okay, you know, why did that? And, you know, um, we are trying to see what is wrong there, what is wrong. If you are injured, that time was injured, so um, that was good. But just to understand what happened with your body or, you know, why you're not performing. So, and a hit here, another question from, from Beta Free here. Um, you know, what, what's your favorite workout? I mean, you know, is that, is that a good way of like finding whether you're still, you know, on the right way? You're talking about, you know, if you're, if you're struggling for a bit of motivation and so forth. If you go and do a, a workout, you know, that you know you, you really like and you feel comfortable when it goes well, is that a good point to like, okay, right, I'm back on the, um, back on the way now? Not really. I am a person that I work and never will say I am. Like, especially when we, me and Lisa were in Darren's squad. It was, we were um, target right to believe and like she will have have to have a really good workout, especially when you run to see how I'm feeling, I'm ready for that. For me, I will have you probably a shitty you know, training session. <laughs> and then, you know, I will just then, you know, do like a really good race. So, I you know, never a workout will give me a confidence and I'm, you know, freedom to stay and, you know, it's just probably more how healthy and fresh I am, you know, motivating more like from inside. And then that's, that's really important because I mean most of the people out there watching, you know, that they, they think that the pros are, are constantly measuring themselves on, 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 you know, individual sessions or what the coaches have expectations for them for one session. But most of the time, you know, as you just pointed out, you know, it's about setting goals and the goals are always a long time away and they're very far and you don't have to have these immediate reactions because as soon as you start changing things too quickly then you never really know if they're really working and, and you're just always focusing on that long guy. So it's a really good point because I think a lot of people think that, that you know we live day by day but yeah. we're, we're looking a little bit further than that. So here I'll give you, I'll, give, I'll just pass it across to you. So we've got, got a Spanish question here. So if you just, you read, if you just read it out, okay. just read it out loud and then you can translate it. Um, so from Ivan Perdiel, he was asking me what I remember from Madrid World Champions Series 2004. So if you want, if you want, if you want to answer Ivan now in Spanish. And then... So, okay. Um, recuerdo que bueno fue la primera competencia de, de la ITU después de tener una temporada bastante eh, 
dura por el cambio de entrenador eh, y bueno, un poco asustada porque mucho cambio en esa época en, en los primeros meses del año, pero muy, muy contenta por el apoyo de, de los españoles y por tener el tercer lugar que realmente fue, fue lindo porque me di cuenta que, que había tomado una buena decisión y que estaba por, por, por un buen camino. Perfect. I said, I completely understood that. Yeah, very good. No, 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 no. Yeah, if you want to do it in English, yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, that for me was really hard. That's, you know, first few uh, months that year because I just had a chance to start to Omar. Uh, it was a very hard decision, but I needed to do it for, for, my mom, for, for myself. So, it was the first race of, of the ITV, especially yeah. in the big stand. So I was a little bit, you know, scared, I don't know what to expect, um, but the support in the league was really good. Um, the Spanish fans uh, and people support me a lot, so I was really grateful for that. And definitely, like, um, um, show me that, you know, I was making a good move you know, and change from one coach to another one. Um, so, yeah, I was very pleased to be here. Now, you must be a huge star in Chile. <laughs> yeah, really, but, I, I, I thought I read something that you, you met the president and you yeah. been, been all those kind of things. I mean, like, like it must be, it must be, you know, uh, feel feel nice coming from from a country where probably there has, there's not a big, uh, you know, big representation of triathletes, uh, you know, uh, superstars, and yourself and your, and your brother. You know, look, you know, it looks <laughs> like it's a it's a thing where I guess in New Zealand a little bit similar where this sport is quite popular because everybody knows. It, people and it's not a big country but you know is it is it does it get as much uh, attention over there or oh uh, i guess um from 2010 or oh no 2011 they start the, the race on tv yeah so every single race and then you know now it's getting a lot more popular and you know i, I usually never uh stay so long there so yeah, yeah. probably maybe three weeks a year yeah. so you know the last two years been there and it's really weird because recognize me when I walk in the street and that's really I don't know funny and awkward and now I, I don't feel comfortable there because I will go to the shop and people will go and be you know, yeah, I saw you on TV and you know <laughs> and even I go with my mom. Usually go there when I have my break. So I went with my mom to the shop and like, actually is no one there. And people still you know, I you know I kind of work kind of because I'm not, you know, typing and stuff like that. And then people, you know, even in the top, they say, oh, yeah, you're a camera. So, <laughs> this, yeah, you know, it's, it's really nice to, to you know, to, to my sport gets you know, popular there, especially to the soccer and, and, and the tennis. That's it's, it's the main thing. Yeah. But uh, for me, it's even more different, you know. If I can be a role model, um, not just a sport, like, get more into, um, do, like, some change in, yeah. in the country. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, yet what actually what would be the kind of change, but more than sport, not just sport, you know, like the whole culture, the whole uh, people, you know, the very poor people that not have any chance, just give them to, to like fight for the, for the dream. It well, doesn't matter what would be their life, um, just be the best what they want to do, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's, it's you know, it's a, it's a big thing that you know you, you would like to spend more time if you could, possibly, you know, in Chile. But obviously, with the series and the way it is, it's it's difficult this way. And I mean, you know, like, is that something you know, like you hope that you would have to do later on in life? Um, I think I need to learn a lot more. Uh, you know, the work like yeah. um, probably get some more experience around the you know, I feel like I could dance so even when I finish my career. Um, I would like to, you know, to, to get more knowledge about different things, you know, and then outside of the sport, yeah. outside of the sport, and get you know, extreme, um, and then probably, you know, to find a way how I could, you know, how I could. It's starting to sound like a politician, but you might, no, be, no, no. You might be running the country. So. No, 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 I, I don't like politicians. <laughs> I don't like the power. Uh, All right, we've got, so we've got another one here. Um, from ITU Hangout, do you have any rituals to prepare yourself the night before the day of racing? Uh, not really, I just go through all what, like my stuff, like uh, what's, um, I visualize the race, you know, 
uh, what actually is happening in space and, and uh, yeah, pretty much like that. You don't know. Just nothing. Nothing. I'm not gonna eat pizza the night before. Or oh, anything actually, like yeah. That. When I went my first uh, uh, for yeah, so you have got something like no, that. No, but I, I got a pizza, so I said, oh, you know, I should have a pizza again. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think so. You know, this is the the pizza that you know, make you on the back. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes you know, I got a pizza before the night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll give it. We'll get another Spanish question. Yes, I do. So yeah, spread it out. That one. Yeah. Read it out. Uh, how do you train with the bike? Um, are you doing a lot of stuff? How uh, are you finding? So, if you each read it in Spanish, so all the Spanish people can read okay. it. They're going to answer in Spanish. Um, and they will... Um, how do you train with the bike? How do you train with the bike? How do you train with the bike? Hago realidades largos que me gusta, eh, hago a veces series, pero no más, más de fluida, como tú dices, me gusta mucho escalar, eh, y la verdad no tanto series, creo que es importante mantener también la, la fuerza en el uso. Ok. Good. So, um, in English, no. Ok, so I like to do long writing, um, then uh, they ask me if I do like uh, like Quality session, yeah, a little bit, probably one time a week. And then, uh, yeah, I just want to like QE on climbing, so I do that as well. Okay. All right, so this last question from Samantha on Twitter. If the race isn't going well, what gets you through to the end? Um, I don't know, I just focus I, uh, in what I usually focus on my training. And I'm trying to always in the would it would it would it be would it be a dream for you say to to be able to be able to race a, a WTS event in, in Chile? Would that be like the ultimate dream for you to be able to race at home in front of your your family and friends? Yeah, I think we would be there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I would be there. Yeah, I would be there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I would be there. Yeah, probably. But I guess, uh, yeah, I feel that in so many places in the world, people need to be here and cheering. So, you know, I think I feel I, you know, born in Chile, but I feel I could represent, you know, my French team, you know, yeah, yeah. and a lot of people around the world that doesn't matter actually where you want or where you come well, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, tomorrow out there uh, in the in Auckland, you'll uh, you'll be getting a ton of support. Um, you know, I'm speaking for the uh, Kiwi population. I mean, we, we, we like we like to support uh, support everyone. So uh, yeah. as long as you're not having to go head to head with uh, Kate and Andrew yeah. down the uh, down the like final straight, I'm sure yeah, everyone will be right. shouting for you. So we no. wish you uh, we wish you good luck uh, this year and of course tomorrow and. Uh, I doubt we'll probably be chatting um, during the year. Um, yeah. Another one of these hangouts, but uh, thanks no, a lot. Cool. Thanks Thank for you. coming in, Barb. Thank and, um, you, um, yeah. Chris, and uh, all the best for you too. Oh, thanks a yeah. lot. So uh, we'll go into our second transition mode now. So, so as we did with, with um, Harvey and Barb, Barb will switch out, and then the superstar will throw in, <laughs> and he just rolls in like that, and there he goes. Jan, how are you going, mate? Very relaxed this morning. Good, good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's, it's, not the first, this. it's not the first time that we've sat on the couch, to be fair, um, together. Uh, we uh, we obviously uh, spent a lot of time together over the years, mate. Um, Old house, mate. Yeah, yeah. Four years living together. Uh, it was a fantastic time of my life. Okay, we, we need longer than pink, 20 minutes. That means you don't have a pink iPad cover, though. So mate, time's I, changed. I, everything's correct these days. Nice. Yeah, you know, this, oh. is, this, is, this is an athlete hangout, mate. Oh. We're, we're supporting everything here. and. Uh, you know, I like to think that pink is the new pink. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you go, <good> boy. <laughs> so, uh, you're obviously here in Auckland, mate. It's a shame that you, that you didn't, haven't been able to get down here uh, since then. Uh, you always told me, you always told me he was going to come see, come to New Zealand, and uh, there was always some reason that he couldn't get here or whatever. But Mainly that I never really got invited by Chris. 
<laughs> he's always like comes down with me. No, I never got a real invitation. But it's uh, it's great to see you, mate. In, in all seriousness, um, you know, obviously we had a little bit of a whoopsie last year before the grand final, um, doing something uh, over crates and, and boulders and whatnot. But um, <laughs> but it's good to see you here, mate. And 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 obviously always love to think that that you would have loved to race on this course and the course is ready and waiting. You know, me and Bevan designed this specifically for ourselves, but also with you and mine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're looking forward to uh, to having you here, mate. Oh, you have hurt me on the odd hill, so yeah. I guess I know what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> so uh, we, we hope that you enjoy it, and uh, you know, obviously the training's been going well uh, for you. Um, you, know, you tell everyone where you've been uh, since uh, since last year. Yeah, basically spent the winter in, in Noosa in Australia, uh, Queensland, most of it, anyways. And um, it's been a big change for me with a change of coach. I've got now, I've now got Dan Lorraine as a, a new coach who sort of guided me through the winter and um, training's actually been going really, really well. It's uh, been been a big change to me from going sort of from training the massive hours that I used to, you know, well over 40, 45 hours. Now cutting it right down to say 30, 32 hours, but doing a lot of lot more intensity. Um, that's really paid off great for me um, until the last few days. It's been it's been fantastic and I just hope to sort of roll and carry this momentum through to the race. Yeah, well, we won't talk about that, but um, <laughs> hopefully we've, we've found some magical fixes last night, but I'd try my best to help you out. <laughs> Absolutely. Chris Gamble in finest form, 9 o'clock at night, managed to organise me an electric tense machine so I could get my muscles a bit more loosened up. <laughs> um, that was some great form indeed. Right, mate, well, we'll get to, get to some of the questions here. We've got a few questions for you, of course. Uh, you know, a lot of German followers out there you, that follow uh, you after after many things that you've done in life, but of course... Um, 2008 was a was a massive year for you. Uh, to fit to say it was life changing for you. Um, we went from just having a quiet coffee with ourselves. Uh, never forget that point at moment where we actually had a coffee before we left to go to Beijing, and we yeah. were sitting there just talking about shooting the breeze. And then the next time we had coffee, we were sitting there in the very same spot. So it was a, a big gold medal sitting in front of us, and uh, you know it was uh, it was pretty it was pretty crazy. We still had the same cups from the moment that we actually left. Four weeks before, and then we all of a sudden were sitting back there, and life has changed for you after that moment. Yeah, back in the Ben's uh, Ben Street, and was uh, was some amazing times, and definitely, um, you know, life's taken a, a good turn for me since. Um, it's been an amazing journey, and really, you know, coming back to these Olympics now to London, it's really made me, you know, cherish that whole time and appreciate um, when my body is at its at its best and, and able to go. You know, I've had a, two difficult years. Um, of the four, and you know, it's been um, it's been challenging at times, but really, you know, it's been it's been fantastic. And I think triathlons help really shape me and, and to give me an identity. And it's um, it's still doing that every single day. You know, I love what I do, and I think it's one of the greatest sports in the world. Yeah, I think I think that a lot of people, um, you know, obviously the, the performances from the Brownleys and Javier, and then obviously from Lisa and Nicola and Aaron at the Olympics, uh, you know, were, were, were truly amazing. But um, personally, yeah. Uh, um, I think you know the performances of Helen and yourself um, in that in that race were, were pretty incredible with with both with what you you two had to go through with leading into that race and to be able to, to get those results I think was uh, you know to, to finish where you finished with with what you went in there with it was pretty impressive and uh, you know to both you bring both of you are uh, uh, nice and healthy I'm sure that you're going to be mixing it up in front with the with the others that I often mentioned <laughs> well you know it, it would just be nice to get in there at the front of them. I'm really happy with my Olympics. Um, you know, six on the paper obviously looks like you're like a step down from from a win. But um, I think personally, yeah, it was a it was a big victory for me. And um, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to actually being healthy and having no more little things and nothing to talk and sort of hide behind and just going and yeah, mixing it up at the front. All right. So so we'll get into a few couple of questions here, mate. Um, so a question here from Nikki and Nia. While running, when you compared this bypass, you. How do you overcome the physical and mental difficulties? What goes through your mind? Well, you know, in a race, people struggle all the time, and um, it's kind of that sort of shared pain is half the pain kind of <laughs> feeling at times, and at other times you're just busy with yourself, you know. So it's um, it really becomes a struggle, and I think that's one of the things that makes a, a really good athlete, a mental tough athlete, is to be able to deal with adversity and, and situations that are not ideal and really to stop that, that train of negative thoughts, which everybody has, you know, if you've got a two hour race, you are not just going to be thinking uh, sunshine and roses all day. It's going to be tough and there are going to be times when you're thinking, oh God, why am I doing this and what's going on and really the guy who can go and turn those thoughts around quickest and just really get himself focused to a neutral zone and his mindset and just 
fired up again. Um, I think that's what works best for me, anyways. Would you would you agree that and would you say that you know like after going through what obviously happened in two thousand and eight and you know being at the heights of the sport and then actually going through what what, what you had to go through in two thousand and twelve, in, in retrospect, it's actually made you a better athlete. Like you actually understand that you know that what you had to go through and that that's just not normally always so rosy and, and you know and the sun's always shining. You know, is that actually made you a better athlete in hindsight? I would say it's made me a, a better athlete, yeah. um, at least also for the fact that I just appreciate those moments when everything is rolling smooth that much more. You know, I, I, um, I benefit from a, from a good training session nowadays so much more than I used to because it just used to come and just flow along, whereas now I'm just really, really grateful for the days when, when it actually the sun is shining. <laughs> it's not hurting like it, like it hurts like it hurts. Um, mate, so we, we've got a couple of German questions here. So if you just... We just want to read it out in German, so just just here, and then if you can give us a quick translation in English, and then if you can answer it back in German and then in English. Um, There's quite a lot of information there. Do I need to read it? So, Bitte sei yeah, exactly. Janne, freust du dich auf Kürzbühel mit der einmaligen Bergankunft? Ohne Windschatten fahren kannst du deinen Können ausführen. Sollte dir lieben, oder? Viel Erfolg für die neue Saison. Um, so really, she's saying, um, if I'm looking forward to the uh, arrival in Kitzbühel, um, a, a, a draft-free race should really um, help me play my strength. Um, it should help me play my strength, but I do also weigh 78 kilos, so going up that hill is going to be, um, it's going to be tough. It's an awesome course. I'm really looking forward to, to heading up the mountains and, and seeing something, a really unique course. I think this is one of those races where you want to be there to experience the first thing because people will talk about it. It's one of those legendary races that will help and um, sort of reshape our sport a little bit, I think, and um, in years to come, people will be like, oh, I can remember the first time kids were when that and that happened. And I think that's exactly that kind of race, and also the reason you want to be on that start line. Sure. Do you want to do you want to answer that German mate now as well, so that you can get a good feel of that? <laughs> I mean, you know, he's, he's German. He can, he can speak it quite quite well actually. Yeah, I, I was just trying to read. <laughs> also, ich habe gerade nur gesagt, dass ich mich natürlich sehr auf ähm, Kirchspiel freue, weil ich glaube, dass es ein legendäres Rennen wird und ähm, eins, über das man noch in vielen, Jahr, in vielen Jahren reden wird, äh, über die Rennsituation, die damals in Kirchspiel entstanden ist. Einfach weil die, die Strecke das Potenzial hat, ähm, ja, einen sehr einmaligen Rennverlauf zu gestalten, aber auch so ein bisschen so eine Mischung aus, äh, aus Tour und äh, sonstigen anderen Großveranstaltungen hat. Und deswegen freue ich mich sehr drauf. Now, mate, I know you're a bit of a, you know, a bit of a stickler with like doing things. You know, you like to sort of have like a little bit of a pressure <laughs> with a lot of things in your life. So we're going to have a bit of a question here from Arthur oh, Hangout. Do you have any rituals to prepare yourself? Not before the day of racing. Oh, the night before, you know, it's just I'll, I'll be honest. I'm a bit of a hippie when it comes to comes to food. I'm, I'm a bit picky in, in picking out things. But really, um, I guess that's also what the last season showed me to focus on the essentials and not so much on the on the little things on the side. What I do, my absolute ritual is and always will be coffee. Um, <laughs> I've actually, yeah, I've actually perfected my little coffee ritual in the morning. I've got a little mobile grinder, which sees me going to the breakfast table and grinding my beans on the way there, and then I just brew up this coffee, and it's just that ritual that gets me into race mode and the smell of it, and it's just, um, yeah, it's something that has, you know, sort of stayed on my side for a, for a few years now, and a good cup of coffee gets well, me going. I, I think, if, I think if we'd actually, if we'd included the amount of time that we actually sat in the breakfast bar and had coffee into actually our training. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were doing 45 hours plus. And we were also doing 40, to take a, 45 to take, coffees plus. To take a quote from a, from a famous YouTube video, 40 hour, five hours training a, a week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so, uh, so, mate, like obviously, um, you, know, the, you know, you missed a few better races last year with, with injury and, and dealing with that and micromanaging, like I said, to perfection almost, um, considering what you had to, to bring to the table. Um, this year, uh, you know the, the new outlook, the WTS series. Um, you know what are the what are the plans for for Jan Fredino and on the WTS? Uh, you're going to be focusing on uh, any particular races. Obviously, Hamburg must be a, a big one as always. Yeah, Hamburg is my big focus this year. Um, you know, being uh, being a team's race as well the day after, but really on a home crowd. Um, you know, what last year has really shown me that I'm, I'm not quite sure how many years I'll be going on the on the. Um, World Triathlon Series course or the World Triathlon Series, but um, I definitely like to get out a, a really good race in Hamburg in front of the home crowd, and that's really what I'm aiming for this year: is to go and um, prepare perfectly for the day, and um, really hit out a big race, and that's really what my whole season's geared around. 
Okay, so we got, so we got another, another question here. It's from uh, it's from Chris Gemmel. He he wonders why um, you can't keep up with him in the go karting arena. Oh. Do you have any chance for actually trying to beat him any day? Well, that's that's the thing with Chris. You know, virtual things like um, on a go kart track, he's he's all fine. But if we get out on the autobahn, he gets dropped like a hot cake. And that, that's that's kind of why I like to keep things. You know, if we're playing Lego triathlon, that's all good. But once we get on uh, the course, I like to give him a go. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you know, you, you've obviously got uh, you know a, a bit of a love for other things outside of triathlon, and uh, you know, uh, multi sport and driving fast cars seems to be right out there for you. I mean, what, yeah. what are the, what's the other stuff, or what's Young Fred up to do, doing when he's not doing triathlon? Or obviously, you've got a big involvement with uh, with the Laureus Foundation and the work you do there, and and, yeah. and, every, and, and other charities in, in Germany and so forth. You know, like you're fairly busy post 2008 with with everything, so you know how you keep that in check. Oh, you know, it's it's, it's really just um, it's giving me a great opportunity. The, the Olympic title is giving me a great opportunity to experience a lot of things, you know, um, outside of sport as well, and find find a sort of balance that that I think I need in order to get the most out of myself. Um, yeah, sure, driving fast cars is, is great fun, and I love you know when I get the opportunity to go to a racetrack or. You know, the Autobahn is my race track, really. <laughs> I love... Uh, Which is completely legal, by the way. We're not, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's no, no speed limitations there, so um, that's, that's been uh, good fun at times, but really, um, you know, on a more um, fundamental scale, I guess the Laureus Foundation has really allowed me to go and, and dip into another world and see um, that sport can do so much more than just really, you know, um, entertain yourself or keep yourself healthy but really help and, and give other people just more in life you know there's um you know we've done cool things like a mid midnight basketball tournament in the middle of london um which was actually part of uh, one of the itu projects uh, a few uh, a few years ago where we sort of just go and get kids off the street to go and play basketball at midnight and um it's just one of the many many things that we're involved in um, that's really shown me that you know there are there are sports greats out there who just really give their time and their energy in order to make the world a better place for kids. And obviously, um, growing up, you know, a, a lot of people might not you know, not realise that you spend a, a, you're obviously from Germany, born in Germany, but you spend a lot of time in South Africa um, with your family, with your dad's job, and so forth. And you know, you feel that that, that you know that that's sort of made you a different person. Uh, the fact that you've had that multicultural. You know, uh, upbringing, and you yeah, know, so now you're obviously fairly entrenched uh, back in back in, uh, in Germany and so forth. And spending a little bit of time over in Australia now as well, but yeah. you know, you're still still pretty multicultural, as they say. Yeah, it certainly <laughs> helped to broaden my horizon and see see that there's different things and uh, going on. You know, there's um, there's just more than than the perfect sort of combi uh, 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 situation we really find in Germany. You know, everybody's got something, and there's nobody really struggling as much as there would be in Africa. You know, in Africa really shows you that, you know, there's, there are some people that have nothing. And um, it really helps you broaden your horizon and, and see the true values of life and just, you know, where, how much sport can actually mean to someone like that. So, mate, uh, we've got another question here. So, um, what's from Javier Gomez? No, yeah. no. no. Um, do you think you actually are a chance against me in the weekend? Oh, he's, he's, only, he's only just left here, and he's already he's already tweeted. Unbelievable! <laughs> Sorry, his place. This thing is taking off already. Yeah, and there he was smiling in my face as I saw him. Yeah, yeah it's really interactive. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. but, in it, but you know, like I'm obviously this is the you know you, you start the season here, you're, you're looking forward to it, and yeah, you know, Harvey's you were there in Maluda Bar, you watched it, you watched the race. I oh, actually you watched the women's race, didn't you? You watched the men's race. Uh, no, I didn't actually watch the women's race. Oh, yeah. <laughs> watched the men's race. I did watch the men's race. <laughs> so uh, you saw you saw the performance out there. Um, obviously, he's yeah. probably the one to look out for. Yeah, I mean, Javier's always you know he's always strong, and it's really impressive to see that he goes well throughout all sorts of conditions. Um, and really, I'm I'm looking forward to it. You know, I've had some great battles against Javier, and um, I'd really love to be to be there and and you know give him a few more good battles and a few good more runs for his money and just. Um, I feel that I am in that kind of shape, and that I've been going really good. And I'm just hoping to sort out a little uh, niggle before before 12 o'clock tomorrow. Really, <laughs> actually, if it'll be fine by by 1:20 when we get on the run course, I seem to be fine in the swim and the bike, and uh, life will be good. So I mean, you, you, you know, knowing you for a long time, you you are always a big fan of conferences and, and you know measuring yourself against people, and, and always being trying to be better than that. You know, everybody knows that the whirlwind that, that Alistair and Johnny has created with, with coming on the scene. You know, 
you know, is that a benchmark for you post, you know, post um, Beijing and then leading into London and what you want to do? And is that still the benchmark for you, you know, to, to get out to these guys and, and get back racing with these guys at the top? Yeah, absolutely. Like I've said, um, I, I haven't really sort of ever, you know, really been that, had any close, close battles with them as I have with Javier. And um, it's just great when you, you know, when you're fighting up for, for the big spots and, um, that's what I'd love to get back to, no matter who it is. You know, the, the Brownies have certainly come on and, and set a new benchmark, and it's, uh, it's been inspiring to see. And um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to getting back up there. And I mean, and post, I mean, living living in Germany and spending a lot of time with you, I think you know, pre pre you know pre 2008, there were there were a lot of guys that you know that, and, and women that have created that a really good image in Germany. But that since 2008, um, you know, firstly you know, the performance in Beijing looked like it just re. Reinvigorated everything within triathlon in Germany in terms of you know the young the young athletes coming through and you know, how do you feel about you know do you think that, that the system is working and that you've got some really good talent coming through and you know really yeah. just snap at your heels when you when you exit? Yeah, well I've read a few articles already where the guys have already called for a change of generations before this race, so I'm quite keen to see what they put on the line. This, it's, this is the way I want to tell uh, you. <laughs> now you've got it. You, 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 you. See, look, you read me like a book. I didn't even have to say. It. <laughs> I went through me and Ben went through that for years. Right? <laughs> so, anyways, I'm uh, quite keen to show them this weekend that uh, change of generation is up when the change of generation is finished. Yeah, well, when when uh, you know when I, I and a few other guys decide to leave. So, so um, yeah, so just leave it at that. And then, and then and then and then following on, they like you know like I mean obviously you, with your work with Lorius and, and you, you've been working with a lot of stuff within Germany and that you know have you got thoughts about what you're going to do after. After leaving the W two years, you you know you're gonna go go and open up a massive corporation. Like I'm probably sure you will. <laughs> or you're gonna go you're gonna yeah. go do the, go do the ITU long course world champs and yeah something like that. I'd love to try and do uh, some of the longer racing. I do feel that's a part of our sport, and I'd love to go there when I have a choice and not when I have to because I um because I don't really have anything left. So um yeah, I'd really be keen to see some of the longer distances, just experience a bit, experiment a bit with the uh, time trial formats, non-drafting, um, just to see if it suits me, and I'll definitely be throwing in one or two races in, during the season. Well, that's good, mate. Well, well, mate. I mean, like, I'm sure it's going to be a, it's going to be a busy year, and uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm sure everything will be will be pretty good. And uh, you know, I guess I guess uh, Pittsfield being a major race um, in the series, I don't know what you know how major it is for you. Are you going to be doing anything different leading into Pittsfield? Um, yeah, I'm going to be focusing on Hamburg, and um, that's going to be very different um, leading into kids. Oh, like, true, true, be... true. This is why I'm telling you, he'll be into politics. I'm 100% sure he's going to play. He's the most diplomatic person out there. Um, I'm just, yeah, you know, the bike has really um, become a focus for me as well, with, um, um, with my new coach coming from a um, sort of, you know, cycling triathlon based background. And um, it's really set my cycling up quite quite a bit, and I think that could be suitable to go and, and race in Kitzbühel. Um, I think it could also be very very clever to race watt based in Kitzbühel because it's that kind of climb that's just so unforgiving that it may well be custom a couple uh, may well be very suited to watt based training, which means that you're just reading your numbers rather than just trying to follow an attack because you know everybody can. Or seven, eight hundred watts for a for a you know a few seconds or half a minute, maybe even a minute if you're a, you know if you're up there. But um, after that, it's all going downhill. Whereas if you're pushing four hundred and fifty watts for a whole long time, that could maybe help you and make a difference in that race. Yeah, I see. I see people already talking about it on Twitter. The Ryan Dallas got his uh, scientific hat on and he's working out exactly <laughs> how much uh, watts per kg he has to put, push up the hill and get to, to to take the podium. So, but I mean, honestly, it is, it is an an amazing and interesting dynamic that's going to potentially change the sport in a, in a major way. So it's going to be really interesting. But yeah. I wish you well in Hamburg and just hope you do good. It's good. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, good luck this season, mate. Um, thanks very much for coming along. Um, thanks for having me. Obviously, it's a, you know, it's a pleasure to sit down and chat with you. And uh, I'm sure and hope we'll be chatting uh, throughout the year again, uh, no doubt, um, after many victories. Well, let's hope so. But uh, I'll sit, we'll sit down right. and chat anyway. I didn't say one, you probably go afterwards, you call me out and say, what about the mini part? So we'll say mini. <laughs> All right, sounds good to me. I'll take it. All right, mate. Let's see it.